I'm back. Hey, uh, do you remember the time whenever you did something really cool and thought to yourself how much of a badass you are? Well, guess what? You ain't nothing but a little wimpy ass bitch because badasses is graded on the curve and Colonel Bob Howard is rocking out with a freaking A+. -plus. He's the only guy to get submitted for a Medal of Honor three separate times for three separate actions. This guy pumps him so much I just want to lace up my shoes, don on an army shirt and go take a PT test. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on profile and, you know, my, my leg's starting to hurt and you know, I, I just got back from a dental appointment and, you know. It's motivated moments on <laughs> Bob was born in Alabama in 1939. His father and four uncles were all paratroopers in World War II. Two of the five were killed in action and three other died stateside uh, due to injuries and conditions sustained in combat. With so much loss so close to home resulting from military service, you, you can imagine why one would not want to join the army, but that wasn't Bob. This guy was born for this. He hit the genetic lottery. It was a walking physical freak show specimen and everybody knew it. He wasn't only physically fit, he also had an undying determination in the ball sack of an angry warded out grizzly doped up on PCP. Woo! Woo! He joined the army in 1956. His first assignment was in the 101st Airborne as an infantryman. But he joined the 5th Special Forces Group soon after because normal infantry just ain't man enough. As a Green Beret, he was placed in a super secret element named the Studies and Observations Group, or SOG, and spent over five years in a body slain wholesale outlet known as the Jungles of Vietnam. Over his years in combat, he was wounded 14 times, but only has eight Purple Hearts, because six of those wounds he decided weren't painful enough to warrant a decoration. This guy was a walking freaking legend. It's like Thor and Superman had a baby, and that baby grew up and slapped the shit out of his bitch ass parents for being fictitious cape wearing dorks. Because who has time for comic books and all you want to do is slay some motherfucking bodies? <laughs> One time he was standing outside of a chow tin and some Vietnamese bad guys rolled up on a motorcycle and hurled a grenade at a group of soldiers. While everybody ducked for cover, Bob Howard grabbed a rifle off a dude and blasted a driver in the face. He then chased down the passenger a mile and a half and sent that bastard to the afterlife with a tale of agony and suffering at the hands of Robert fucking Howard. Another time in Laos, his recon team was uh, laying by a road at night when an enemy convoy rolled past. Despite limited visibility, he jumped out right after the last week of the convoy passed and spun a claymore around over his head like a freaking lasso, tossed that bastard into the back of a truck full of enemy troops and detonated it, giving those sons of bitches a free trip to an all-you-can-eat buffet of shrapnel and pain. For these actions and countless other rescue missions while under direct withering enemy fire, Howard received no awards. He deemed these actions were not enough to warrant a trip to clothing and sales and pay six dollars and twenty three fucking cents for some stupid ass ribbons. In 1967 his element assured a sizable enemy cache. After his destruction, uh, Howard scouted out for possible adversaries and came across a large enemy force. He killed four of the soldiers and one NVA sniper. Then, as many started blasting away at his position, he crawled up as close as six inches from a firing machine gun barrel, tossed a grenade into the, to the pit and wiped out the entire crew. He then proceeded to demoralize the enemy to the point of retreat. He was put in for a medal of honor for this, but the haters in Washington downgraded it to a silver star. Almost a year later, he single-handedly knocked out a PT-76 tank and waxed out an anti-aircraft gun section. While being repeatedly wounded across his legs, arms, back, and face, he refused evacuation and saved the crew of a downed Huey. Again, he was put in for the Medal of Honors, but those sons of bitches in the Pentagon were batting a thousand in the Hater World Series and downgraded that bastard to a Distinguished Service Cross. Just six weeks after that, he was with his element searching for some MIAs. They were swarmed by an enemy ambush and shit was just going nuts everywhere. Howard's M16 was blown to bits right out of his hands and he was severely wounded. Then some NVA soldier brought out a fucking flamethrower and started lighting everybody around him on fire. You know, disregarding this dire condition, he crawled to a wounded officer and drug him away to safety. There he saw a U.S. infantryman lying behind a log and crying. He demanded that soldier's rifle because he knew it was pretty freaking useless at this point. But the soldier refused, but in consolation gave up his pistol instead. The enemy started to swarm his position, but Howard began to cap those running bastards right in the face until he got out of ammunition. One of the enemy rounds impacted Bob's magazine pouch on his hip and exploded it, sending him to the ground and wounding him even more. 
At that time, the crying soldier decided to man up and lay down some lead. Howard looked around and noticed that soldier wasn't alone, but was part of a platoon of pussies who were all hiding and leaving Howard alone to fight. He gathered his platoon up and gave him the verbal equivalent to a violent prison rape and got that unit fighting again. Under his guidance, the platoon fought while he called in danger close airstrikes. After an enemy retreated, he was medevaced out of there with life-threatening burns and shrapnel wounds. Now, he wasn't one to lay around in a hospital, so he went AWOL from a medical facility and snuck back to his unit still in freaking pajamas. For these actions, he was again submitted for the Medal of Honor, and the cop whistlers up in D.C. had no choice but to relent and award it to him because they realized this guy was a walking nightmare, fully capable of snatching their souls out of their poorly white buttholes and castrating them, sending them to roam around in the spirit realm as nutless cunts. After multiple deployments to the jungle and accumulating over five years of combat service, Howard crossed over to the officer ranks and climbed the echelons of the Special Operations Community. He retired as a full bird in 1992. After retirement, he went to work for the VA and uh, spent some time pissing off the bureaucratic douchebags who were there running the show. He was diagnosed with terminal pancreatic cancer and died in 2009. You know, he was buried in his uniform at Arlington, and it's rumored that every night on a full moon, you hear the screams of bloodlust and war cries as he exits his grave to prey upon commie insurgents in need of motherfucking justice. And that, kids, is your motivated moments and history. <laughs>